Okay, so let's dig into um, how to actually do these because I think it'll make a lot more sense um, once we really get into one. Okay, so the first thing that we have, we are given some data. It says the following results were collected in a cross between two parents or two plants that are heterozygous for seed shape and seed color. All right, so they're heterozygous. Um, so big R equals round, little r equals wrinkled, big Y equals yellow, little y equals green. Okay, so you should know how to do this. Um, you should be able to figure out um, the expected results. So that's really the first thing that we have to do. Um, they are given our observed results. We have um, some data there. So you can read over that. So the first thing we have to do, we have to figure out the expected phenotypic ratios for the offspring. All right, so to do that, you're gonna have to do a Punnett square, or luckily for us, we have some knowledge already. So hopefully you can recognize that when you have two dye hybrids, you know that you're automatically going to have a 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio. So I'm going to save you a step here. So you don't actually have to do the Punnett square on this one because you'll know what your ratio should be. Okay, so for that, like we said, we know that the expected phenotypic ratio for the offspring is 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. Okay, so thinking about that. I'm going to toggle between them some things, so be patient with me as I get this other thing up and running here. Okay, so the other part of this was, so A, our first question was expected ratio, correct? Okay, our expected phenotypic ratio. And then I'll try to move it so you can see it. That would be good too. Okay, so this is going to be step one. Okay, find expected ratios. by doing Punnett square. Okay, so by doing the Punnett square. Okay, and so like I said, I'm gonna make your life easy because we know when you cross two dye hybrids, they are going to give you a nine to three to three to one ratio. Okay, so let's check back just a second. Okay, so we had our parents were big R, little r, big Y, little y. Okay, so these are our parents. Normally you would do the big old Punnett square. We're not gonna do that because we know 9 sixteenths are going to be round and yellow. Okay, so I'm looking at my, those, so they have both dominant traits. Three sixteenths are going to be round and green. If you've not gotten out a piece of paper to work on this practice problem with me, make sure you pause and go back and get one out and start over um, so you can take some notes as we go through this as well. Um, to add to this. Oh, and, all right, and then 3 sixteenths are going to be wrinkled and yellow, and 1 sixteenth is going to be wrinkled and green. Another thing you might want to pause and grab is a calculator. I think that would be helpful to have as we're getting ready to jump into some math here. So go grab that for me. Okay, so this is what you should have. Let's see if I can get this to focus a little better. Oh, there we go. Okay, so this is what you'll end up with. Okay, first step, we, find, we found our expected ratio by doing the Punnett square. Like I said, we, we helped ourselves out by doing an easy one. All right, so what do we need to do next? So 
what we have to do next really for it asks you to find um, how many are expected in each phenotype. So that was really step two. Okay, so it's step two, determine the expected number of individuals for each phenotype. Alright, in this case, um, it asks you, it says in a thousand offspring, how many are expected in each phenotype? Okay, so where do we get that number? The reason why we say a thousand is because if you were to add up all your observed phenotypes, that is going to add up to a thousand. 547 plus 193 plus 195 plus 65 is a thousand offspring. Okay, so that number changes every time. Okay, so you're going to do that. So you're what you're going to do to determine the expected number, you are going to take the total number of offspring times the expected ratio for each phenotype. Okay, so in this case, they gave you the total number of offspring. If they don't give it to you, just add up all the observed to get your total number. So in this case, they told you 1,000 offspring. Okay, so times expected ratio for each phenotype. So the first phenotype, um, the ratio was 9 sixteenths. Okay, and this is going to be our expected number for round and yellow. Okay, so you can take your handy dandy calculator that you got already. Okay, so we take a thousand times nine sixteenths, and we got five sixty two point five. All right, so then we do the same thing, we just keep going one thousand times three sixteenths. Okay, that's going to tell us the number that we're going to expect for round and green. Okay, handy dandy calculator there. I would recommend pausing. If you feel like you're good to go, you might even pause and work out the rest of them and see how you're doing. 187.5 and then times 3 sixteenths again to tell us round and, or sorry, wrinkled and yellow. Okay, that makes life easy because it's the same number. Okay, and then 1,000 times 1 16th. is 62.5. Okay, so this is now, we now have all of our expected numbers. Okay, so then step, okay, let me go to the next page. Step three, or really this on this page, it's asking you C. Okay, so really step three, let's go with that idea. Okay, so step three is going to be performing chi-square analysis, okay? Okay, so we are going to, or determine 
essentially, in other words, we're going to determine chi-square. Okay, so step three, determine chi-square value. Okay, so this is where we need to go back to our equation. So we had, I'm going to rewrite the equation here on my paper. Chi-square equals summation, so observed minus expected, squared over expected. Okay, so there it is. All right, so you might want to make yourself a table for each of the phenotypes. So each of the phenotypes. Okay, and then you can write the observed number, the expected. Okay, and then you can plug and chug to get the chi-square value. I won't, you could write out a table for like observed minus expected squared and then observed minus expected squared by E or over expected again, but I think we can just plug and chug there. Okay, so the, for the phenotype, we had round yellow, round and green, wrinkled, and yellow, and wrinkled, and green. Okay, so let's go back to what we were given. So we were told the observed number was round and yellow was 547, Round and green was 193, wrinkled and yellow was 195, and green and wrinkled is 65. Okay, so going back to what we just determined with our expected, so you're just going to plug these numbers, sorry. Oops. Okay, so there's your table there. You're just going to plug the numbers that we just calculated. I know this is kind of a multiple step process. We're, we're going to practice it multiple times. So you'll get used to it. Um, you're going to plug in the numbers that you just calculated. These are all your expected. So we had, you're just going to rewrite those, 562.5, 187.5, 187.5, and 62.5. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I will work through the very first one for you. And then what I would like you to do is go ahead and try to do the rest of them and then plug in your case and then pause while you're doing that. And then you can check your answers. Like try it on your own and then come back and check your answers here. Okay. So the first one, round and yellow. Okay, so we are plugging in observed minus expected. So 547 minus 562.5. We're going to square that number. Okay, so let's find out what that is. 547 minus 562.5. Okay, that's a negative number, but that's okay because we're just going to square it. All right, my calculator is giving me a funky number. Let me see if I can get my different calculator really quickly. Okay, so then you, what you will get, you'll get 240.25. Then you're going to divide that by your expected. So your expected is 562.5. Okay, so take that number, divide by 562.5, and you should get 0.427. Seven. Okay, so go ahead and pause before you go to the next video and see if you can figure out your chi-square value for the rest of these and figure out your total chi-square value because remember you have to sum all these up at the end. So go ahead and do that before you move on to the next video.